Hi everyone, myself Prezi. Welcome to my channel, Commerce Class. In this video, I am going to discuss the calculation of earning per share and capital structure decision with the help of a problem. That question is given in the description box. Please check the question. Among different financial plans, company wants to select a plan which maximizes its value. For that, company calculates earning per share of each plan and select a plan which gives highest earning per share. So, capital structure decisions are based on earning per share. Now, we will move to the question. XYZ Limited is considering three financial plans for which the key information is as below. Total investment to be raised to rupees 4 lakh. Plans of financing proportion. Uh, plan A, Plan B and Plan C. Plan A, equity 100%. Then Plan B, equity 50%. Debt 50%. Preference shares nil. Plan C, equity 50%. Debt nil. Preference shares 50%. Cost of debt 8%, cost of preference 8%, tax rate 50%, equity shares of uh, the face value of 10 each will be issued at a premium of rupees 10 per share. Expected EBIT is 1,60,000. Calculate earning per share. Then which of the three financial plans would you recommend and why? ABIT of XYZ Limited is 1,60,000. Then firm decided to raise its capital. Rupees 4 lakh. For, uh, for that, uh, three financial plans are available. Plan A, Plan B and Plan C. In Plan A, 4 lakh is raised only through equity share capital. In Plan B, 50% equity and 50% debt capital. So, 50% uh, of 4 lakh, that is 2 lakh uh, in equity shares and 2 lakh debt capital. Then Plan C, 50% equity and 50% preference. That means 2 lakh equity shares and 2 lakh preference shares so from these three plans company want to select only one plan so selection is on the basis of earning per share the plan which has highest earning per share is selected now we will move to the calculation of earning per share Earning per share is equal to earnings available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity. How to calculate earnings available to equity shareholders? Here EBIT is given. So from this EBIT, we want to find out earnings available to equity shareholders. Equity shareholders are the owners of the firm. And they get profit after meeting all the obligations. That means making payment to debenture holders and preference shareholders. Debenture and long term loans are external equity. So, interest on debenture or interest on debt capital must be paid before making payment to preference shareholders. To get earnings available for equity shareholders, First step is from EBIT, earnings before interest and tax, we want to deduct interest on debenture. Then after deducting interest from EBIT, uh, the result is earnings after interest before tax. Then second step is we want to deduct tax and the result is earnings after tax. Then third step is we want to deduct preference dividend. Then uh, the result is earnings available for equity shareholders. So to get earnings available for equity shareholders, first we want to deduct uh, interest on debenture. Then we want to deduct uh, tax. Then third step is deduction of preference dividend. Plan A. First step is 
deduct interest on debt from EBIT. EBIT is given it is 1,60,000. Here in plan A, 4 lakh is raised only through equity. No external fund is used here. So here no debenture and long term loan. So interest on debenture is nil. So earnings before taxes same amount 1,60,000. The second step is deduct tax. Tax rate is given. It is 50 percentage. 50 percentage of earnings. Here earnings is 1,60,000. So uh, 50 percentage of 1,60,000 that is 80,000. So here earnings after taxes 80,000. That means 1,60,000 minus 80,000 earnings after taxes 80,000. And third step is uh, deduct preference dividend. Here only equity is used for raising fund. No debt and no preference is used. So preference dividend is nil. <clears throat> then earnings available for equity shareholder is 80,000. Then the next step is calculation of EPS. EPS is equal to earnings available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. Here earnings available for equity shareholder is 80,000. Number of equity is 20,000. Some information is given in your question about uh, equity shares. Here face value of equity is given that is 10. But these equity shares are issued at a premium of rupees 10. So total issue price is 10 plus 10, 20. Fund to be raised as 4 lakh. Here only equity shares are used to raise fund. So equity share capital is 4 lakh. But number of equity share uh, is, uh, shares are not given in this question. We want to find out number of equity shares. So share capital is equal to number of equity share into issue price. So here share capital is 4 lakh. 4 lakh is equal to number of equity share into 20. So number of equity share is equal to 4 lakh divided by 20. That is 20,000 shares. Here in plan A, 20,000 shares of 20 each should be uh, raised. Earning per share is equal to num uh, earnings available uh, for equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. Earnings available is 80,000. The number of equity is 20,000. So 80,000 divided by 20,000 earning per share or EPS is equal to rupees 4. Plan B. Here, 50 percentage of 4 lakh is issued through equity shares, then other 50 percentage through debt capital. EBIT is 1 lakh 60,000. Then, first step is deduct interest on debt. Here, firm uses both equity and debt capital. Debt capital is 50 percentage of 4 lakh. So 4 lakh into 50 divided by 100 that is 2 lakh. Cost of debt is given in our question it is 8 percentage. So 2 lakh into 8 by 100 is interest on debt capital. So 2 lakh into 8 by 100 is 16,000. So first step EBIT minus interest on debt. Here EBIT is 1,60,000. Interest on debt is 16,000. So earnings before taxes 1,44,000. Then second step. Second step is deduct tax. Tax rate is given in our question. It is 50 percentage of earnings. Earnings here is 1,44,000. So, 1,44,000 into 50 divided by 100, that is 72,000. So, earnings after taxes, 72,000. That is earnings before tax minus tax. Earnings before tax is 1,44,000 minus tax, 72,000. And earnings after taxes, 72,000. And third step is deduct preference dividend. Here, 
no preference share is used so preference dividend is nil so earnings available for equity shareholder is 72000 the next step is calculation of eps eps is equal to earnings available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares here number of equity share is 10000 here equity share capital is 50 percentage of 4 lakh 50 percentage of 4 lakh is 2 lakh so equity share capital is 2 lakh then here issue price uh, face value of equity share is given that is 10 here shares are issued at a premium of rupees 10 so issue price is face value plus premium that is 20 face value 10 premium 10 so 10 plus 10 20 here face value is uh, sorry issued price is 20 so share capital is equal to number of shares into issue price so share capital is 2 lakh 2 lakh is equal to number of share is not given so number of share into 20 so 2 lakh divided by 20 number of share is 10000 and eps is equal to 72000 divided by 10000 eps is 7.20 plan c 50 percentage equity and 50 percentage preference ebit is 1 lakh 60 thousand so first first step is deduct interest on debt from ebit here interest on debt is nil because fund is raised only through equity and preference no debt capital so no interest on debt so here earnings before taxes same amount uh, one lakh sixty thousand. The next step is deduct tax. Tax rate is given. It is fifty percentage. Fifty percentage of one lakh sixty thousand. Taxes eighty thousand. So earnings after taxes one lakh sixty thousand minus eighty thousand. That is eighty thousand. And third step is deduct preference dividend. Here preference share is. 50 percentage of 4 lakh that is 2 lakh so preference dividend rate is 8 percentage that means cost of preference share is 8 percentage so 2 lakh into 8 by 100 16,000 is preference dividend so we want to deduct preference dividend from earnings after tax earnings after tax is 80,000 80,000 minus 16,000 so earnings available for equity shareholder is 64,000 then next step is calculation of EPS EPS is equal to earnings available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity share here number of equity share is 10,000 equity share capital is 2 lakh that is 50 percentage of 4 lakh and issue price is 20 so number of equity share is 2 lakh divided by 20 10,000 is number of equity shares so EPS is equal to earnings available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity earnings available is 64,000 divided by 10,000 and EPS is 6.40 EPS is highest in plan B. So, here plan B is preferred. So, equity and debt capital are used to raise fund. So, the plan with highest EPS is selected. Here plan B has highest EPS. So, plan B is selected. That's about calculation of EPS. Here three financial plans are given uh, among these three plans we want to select one plan which maximizes value of firm for that we uh, calculated earning per share of three financial plan and the financial plan which um, gives maximum earning per share is selected hope you all understood this problem please subscribe my channel and share my videos Thanks for watching my channel. Bye.